unkempt, nor is he particularly scruffy. One might say of Basil Barutsky that the most remarkable thing about him is precisely how remarkably unremarkable he is. The only notable thing about him is that he is responsible for what has been sometimes described as one of the worst acts of domestic violence in Canada's history, though the term domestic violence doesn't really do justice to the gravity of his crimes. On September 22nd of 2015, Basil Barutsky murdered three women he had grievances with in a spree killing that spanned the course of several hours and miles. At 7.30am, he left his apartment, drove to the cottage of 66-year-old Carol Culloden, and strangled her to death with a television cable. He then drove 20 miles to the Wilno home of 36-year-old Anastasia Kuzik and fired a shotgun into her neck. I love these because, like... I think Matt Orchard, who's a friend of the show, by the way, now we know. I think he has a bone to pick with Canada. Trying to make Canada look like it's the worst Commonwealth. That's why he only does murders that happen in Canada. Kuzik's sister, Eva, was also in the house at the time and managed to run to safety and call the police. Barutsky then drove another 20 miles to the Foymount Road farmhouse residence of his former partner, 48-year-old Natalie Warmerdam, who he also shot in the neck after chasing her through the house. He then continued driving for a time and eventually surrendered himself to officers in a field off of Kinburn Side Road in Kinburn, Ontario. The following morning, he is interviewed by Detective Sergeant Kaylee O'Neill. The interview could be summarized as nearly five hours of contemptible self-pity and tiresome ranting. As a result, even a heavily abridged version may be somewhat of a slog to get through. That being said, it's still an interesting case study of how an individual can be both profoundly wicked and extremely boring all at the same time. Wicked. Profoundly wicked. Uh, food and coffee on the left there. What I want to make sure is that there's no misunderstanding about what we're here talking about today. And really all I want to know is what's your understanding of why, why we're here right now, Basil? Is it okay to call you Basil? Is that what you normally go by? Basil. Basil? Here we get our first glimpse into Basil Barutsky's underlying narcissism. Most people unfortunate enough to be named after a culinary herb would not go out of their way to correct someone for having a less embarrassing interpretation. Basil, however, is insistent that Detective O'Neill gets his stupid name right. O'Neill then proceeds to cover his bases by making sure Barutsky understands his right to consult with counsel under Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms. A simple formality that Barutsky draws out for several minutes with a series of terse and... Oh man, just ripped Come him, on. dude. Imagine being named after a herb. ...base of answers to simple questions, such as do, do you understand and does that make sense? So if you'd like to speak with a lawyer at any time today, Basil, you can just let me know and I can make that happen for you, okay? This just fell on its own, and I don't know why. What does that mean, Chatters? It's always on top of the Shungite. What the fuck does that mean? All right, anyway, let's keep going. So would, you like to, would you like to talk to one right now? No point, I just... There's no point right now. Ooman. It's a beat Ooman! If you change your mind and you decide you'd like to talk to one later, will you let me know? Does that seem fair? Know. Sorry, I couldn't hear you, Basil. I'll let somebody know. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm here, right? I'm, I'm the one that can make that happen for you. So if you let me know, if you change your mind, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to get a lawyer on the phone for you. Is that fair? While you're at it, I'd love to be unbanned really? to I made one fellatio joke during the Hannity Barutsky continues to solve between unnecessarily long pauses, specifically complaining about a history of being maliciously prosecuted and treated poorly by authorities. Detective O'Neill also takes Barutsky's medical history, a process which Barutsky again insists on making extremely tedious. Were you able to get any sleep last night? I have no idea if I slept on some steel bench. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what my back would Did you did you mention anything to the guard about it? The answer when I mentioned is that they're not supposed to be comfortable when I ask them to loosen the handcuff because I had my hand cut off. Who cares? 
Is it when you were coming over from Ottawa, the cuffs were too tight? Is that what you're saying? And they left me sitting outside here in the car. I kept telling them I could hardly feel my fingers anymore. My whole hand swollen. No, it's not blue. I blue. don't care. I had my hands cut off. I feel things a little different than what you do. Aw. Mm -hmm. Damn, dude. That sucks, brother. Aw, boys. Wait, what did Austin say? Football's coming home. Football's coming home. Asan notice me, Bogo. Asan notice me, Bogo. Okay, I fucking notice you. What else do you fucking want from me, Bogo? Football's coming home, bro. Okay, thanks. Well, we're watching murder now, Austin. I was only asking for common sense. Is it fair to say that you're you're getting that from me now? Getting what? Common sense, some courtesy. No. And so what have, what have I not done here to? You're a police research. officer. I have lots of experience with police officers. I just told you about a car accident and how they treat me. So I don't trust you one little bit. Okay. This is insane, dude. Like, he just did a double homicide, got caught for it, and he's complaining about his treatment by a cop. And he's like, I, I, dude, I've, I've dealt with cops so many times. Oh, triple homicide, not even a double. Move the CC, bro? No, it's a good place to have the CC. One of you fucks up or lies, the rest of you is all hiding. It doesn't sound like you've had very many positive experiences with policemen. I've never had a positive experience with a policeman. Mm -hmm. I think there would have been a positive policeman. My whole life would be different. Well, what about the experience we're having right now? Is that positive? <laughs> I just told you you're a police officer and you're going by that stupid record that you guys made. If it was a black guy, would you react the same? Or there was literally a, a, a fucking black dude that was arrested uh, after a double homicide, including on a cop. And they... And he had killed two people, or one was a cop and one wasn't. And I criticized him for fucking uh, complaining oh. as well. Except he also was, his ass was beaten on top of that. Well, triple homicide, sorry. If you saw that chatter, would you knock him out? Of course not. I abhor violence and violent behavior. I would never do such a thing. Hey. What, what, what is this record you're talking about anyway? Do you, you have a criminal record? Barutsky's criminal record and the glaring pattern of domestic violence within it has been the source of much criticism toward Canada's correctional system. Though something as extreme and senseless as a triple murder may seem like the sort of thing that nobody could reasonably see coming, many advocates have alleged that in the case of Basil Barutsky, something like what transpired on September 22nd was foreseeable, and reasonable measures could have been taken to prevent it. Barutsky's first count of battery dates back to 1985, with the alleged victim being his wife at the time, Marianne. Fucking typical, dude. It's always like this, dude. It's always fucking a pattern of domestic abuse. Mask. A pattern of fucking domestic abuse that never gets addressed by the fucking police that ends up with like an actual murder in there. Barutsky end. successfully fought the accusation in court and was found not guilty. The couple separated in December of 1993, and Barutsky was charged again with assaulting Mask in February of 1994. Again, Barutsky was found not guilty. Barutsky and Mask somehow reconciled several years later, and then permanently separated in August of 2008, after yet another alleged act of domestic violence, in addition to death threats from Barutsky. Again, Barutsky walked, but this time in exchange for agreeing to sign a peace bond. Mask alleged during court proceedings in 2011 that Barutsky's acquittal of the 94 assault was due to her being coerced by Barutsky into withdrawing her accusations. A very believable claim given at one point during the divorce proceedings, Barutsky produced a contract he claimed Mask had voluntarily written and signed in 1994, wherein she surrendered full custody of their children to him and took responsibility for making up her previous accusations. The wording in the document rings so strongly of Barutsky's perspective that it's genuinely farcical to think he could have believed it would ever be taken as genuine, and it was, of course, disregarded by the judge. All of this only begins to scrape the surface of Barutsky's history of abuse, and Marianne Mask wasn't even one of the targets of his killing spree. We'll unpack the sordid details related to his deceased victims as they come up in the interrogation. 
Well, one of the reasons I'm also here, Basil, is that I'm sure you're aware of the gravity of the situation and the seriousness of this investigation. I certainly am, given that you've been arrested for these crimes. And there are more, no more serious crimes than murder. I didn't murder anybody. That's right, you killed somebody. Correct? Killed three people, actually. What's the difference between killing and murder? Thou shalt not murder commandments. Mm-hmm. This is the cornerstone of Barutsky's moral defense that he derives from amateur theology. The argument is fairly simple and completely asinine. In some versions of the Bible, such as the Torah, the commandment widely known as thou shall not kill actually reads you shall not murder. It is this version which Barutsky has designated as the correct one, and he contends the wording absolves him of any sin in carrying out the killings of his three victims. The act of killing is the mere ending of any given being's life, whether that be an animal or a person, an innocent or a sinner. Murder, however, must be the killing of an innocent. Barutsky contends that his victims were not innocent, as they wronged him in numerous ways, including lying about him in court for financial gain. Leaving aside his characterizations of their actions can be safely assumed to be delusional and or deliberately dishonest. His biblical justification is still seriously flawed. For one, while it is true that the Bible clearly sanctions killing under certain circumstances, it does not permit any one individual to take it upon themselves to act as judge, jury, and executioner. Another glaring issue is that if a literalist interpretation of killing offences from the Bible were to be adopted in modern times, even government-sanctioned executions would quickly begin to get severely out of control. Sins such as murder and bearing false witness are not the only acts deemed worthy of the death penalty in Scripture. A multitude of other offences, including homosexuality and fortune-telling, are also listed as high enough crimes to put one on the chopping block. So one of the reasons I'm here is to give you this opportunity to explain why you killed these three girls. You're putting words in my mouth. I haven't said anything. Just I just asked you a simple question. Why did you kill these girls? That's it. You're putting words in my mouth, but I didn't say that. Which words am I putting in your mouth? Well, I can't really put a question in your mouth when I'm asking it. And it's interesting how you made the distinction between murder and killing. What that would suggest is that you have some kind of justification for what you've done, which it's also been my experience is always the case. In my career, I have not spoken to one killer who woke up that day and decided they were going to go and kill somebody. Virtually every single one of them found themselves in a set of circumstances beyond their control. And they reacted, typically poorly, and something happened. There's always an excuse. There's always a reason why. And whether you choose to acknowledge it or not, your opportunity to tell the why is important. Because like I said, what that does, it allows the community to get some understanding of why you did these things. Because on the surface, people just wonder and they will naturally gravitate to what they think is the worst in people. But when you explain why you did these things, then people can get an appreciation for how the situation developed. And sometimes they can even see themselves in that situation. Geez, if that was me, I may have reacted the same way. Now, that only really matters to somebody who cares what anyone thinks about them, which is why I asked you that question initially. It's also been my experience that people say they don't care what other people think. That's usually not true. Everyone cares. It's human nature to care. You cared enough to do what you did, so you're going to have a hard time convincing me that you don't care what people think about you. You wait, Basil. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. It won't make any sense at all. Okay. Do you need me to do you explain anything? So Am I speaking too fast? Am I speaking clearly? Okay, I'm not hardly listening. I'm not sure how extensive your involvement is with police investigations. But basically how they work. They're like a big pie, if you can imagine. A big pie. Okay? And the pie is broken into all kinds of different sections. 
Detective O'Neill goes into a rather tortured pie analogy, wherein he explains that there are many pieces of the pie of an investigation, and the piece of the pie that Barutsky is responsible for is that of the truth, but the other pieces of the pie may wind up proving that his piece of pie was actually filled with lies, which in turn will damage the credibility of his lies. Barutsky remains unreceptive. Now, sometimes this slice of the pie might be empty altogether because you could do as you're doing right now and choose not to see anything at all, which is completely fine because that's your right, and you can do that. But the risk is, again, we go back to all these other sections of the pie, and we use them to prove our case. And there's a chance that you can lose credibility in the end. Now, the third option is that you actually take advantage of this opportunity to tell your side of the story and explain why you took those lives. In which case, the truth stands because it's the truth and that's what happened. And then we don't need all these other pieces of the pie to show what happened because it's your story and you decided to tell it as opposed to everyone else making decisions about you and what kind of guy you are. And this is what I want you to think about, Lisa. This is what I want you to do. I want you to look into the uh, past charges against me by those women and I want you to do that proper investigation mm -hmm. from the point of view of what really happened and then uh, have a retrial, a fair trial, and uh, then we'll talk about uh, reality. So any information you want from me, you can get by simply doing the proper investigation for the past. Mm -hmm. I was put in jail twice wrongfully. If you were looking at this investigation, if you were looking at the allegations against you and the evidence and the content of this case, what would you think about what you've done here and how you're portraying yourself? You're a reasonable guy. What would you make of all this if you were looking at it from the inside in? Would you like to sit back and watch this video of you talking about how, I don't know how many years ago, uh, some investigation went bad for you, some assault investigation, when you're here under arrest for killing three women? Is that what you'd like to see on video? Would you like to see on video how nonchalant and non-interested you look for these cameras right now, when three women are dead because you killed them? Nonchalant. Well, I mean, that's the adjective that comes to mind right now. You're happy for me. You're not you don't have to be happy for me because what's going to happen is when I'm done here, Basil, when I'm done talking to you, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk out of this room and I'm going to go on to the next case. And I won't give this a second thought. Because there's lots of other cases just like this one. This might be a unique situation for you. It's not unique to me at all. It really isn't. And when I walk out of this room, when we're done here today... Okay, two things, or three things. One, it seems like this guy just did a murder so he could debate, okay? What the fuck was that, like, r slash uh, atheist Andy ass, like, uh, God thing that he just dropped? Two... You never want to get called out by Matt Orchard for an analogy, especially you never want that analogy to be called tortured. And lastly, yeah, which by the way, he's a debate lord. It's obvious, worse than fucking murder, clearly. And the last thing I was going to say is, fuck, I'm forgetting it now. God damn it. There was another thing I wanted to say. Oh, here is a great defense. Are you ready? Here is a great defense. When you're caught... After a triple homicide, when you, like, murdered your exes and your wife and shit like that, here's a great defense. Uh, actually, look me up. I am a serial domestic abuser. What a fucking brilliant way to defuse the situation, my friend. Hey, by the way, look me up. I've done a lot of domestic abuses, okay, in the past, and they're, they're all... Unlawful. Motherfucker, they just caught you for a triple homicide, dude. What do you, you... There's nothing that solidifies how lawful those domestic abuse cases were than what you just did. Sorry, let's keep going. Hey, your opportunity to fill in that pie yes. and affect the way people think about you and what you've done is gone. This would a liar. Hmm? 
would be with somebody that is supposed to be representing me. I didn't catch the first bite of that, Basil. What about a lawyer? It's going to be representing you? That would be when I would be telling my story to a lawyer that is interested in representing me. This is an interesting contradiction in Barutsky's words and actions. He states that the circumstances under which he would provide his side of the story would be when talking to a lawyer who has his best interests at heart, which is a very sound approach. But Detective O'Neill has already gone to painful lengths to point out that he has a right to a lawyer and that he can be set up with one at any point he chooses to request so. Yet still he chooses to sit in this room and share his perspective of how he is the one who has been wronged, albeit in an excruciatingly drawn-out manner. This gives away the fact that his ego does in fact desire for his side of the story to be heard by authorities. He just wants to feel in control and make them work for it. You are not representing me. You are representing evil. No, I'm representing the truth. I'm representing three dead girls, three dead women. If you were, you'd be looking at Two ex-girlfriends of yours. <coughs> three. Three? No, I don't think Natalie was. I think she turned you down, right? I lived with her for three years. What are you talking about? Came for half the farm. Work on it. Sorry, Anastasia is the one that turned you down. Turned me down. She's quite a, quite a bit younger than you, too. You're not the first guy to be turned down, though. I wasn't turned down. Anastasia, I was dating Carl Culleton, and I was working. Anastasia's house. Okay. She was a friend, like a daughter. She lied in court. Sometimes people are not truthful. A lot. She lied a lot, and the Crown Attorney said, it's okay to lie. <laughs> Whether or not Anastasia Kuzik and Basil Barutsky ever had a romantic relationship wouldn't have really been material to what Barutsky was in court for when Kuzik testified against him. On December 30th of 2013, Barutsky had strangled and beaten Kuzik as well as lighting several of her possessions on fire after she told him she wanted him out of her house. He served just over a year in jail for charges of assault and mischief, being released on December 27th of 2014, despite refusing to sign a court order prohibiting him from contacting Kuzik. He also disobeyed court orders to attend counselling, a breach of his probation which he was never pulled up on. That was her end statement, I think. It's okay, some people lie. So is that why? What's the point of going to court when it's okay to lie? So is that why you killed these girls, Basil? Because they're, they're not going to get their comeuppance in court? They're going to lie and they're going to escape responsibility? If you're a cop, you should know that people that use the system are guilty. What was done to you if the community that hurt you so badly know, that you had to If the community things. wanted to know, they would start an independent inquiry and look into the past. How did it ever evolve to get to this? Because Basil Barutsky is a kind, caring, God-fearing human being. So how you know did what? I that, guess we that is to, a point we agree on. We need to go back to the past and find out how could this have happened. That is a point we agree on. If there's one thing I do know what people have said about you is you're a kind, caring person, which is why I'm having a difficulty with this contrast in behavior. Basil Barutsky's reputation as a kind and caring person is very mixed. He was indeed known to do kind things, such as free-of-charge handyman work for friends and neighbours. But even in that instance, his actions were sometimes not as virtuous as they may seem on a surface level. For instance, he began building a deck on his first victim, Carol Culloughton's cottage, without her permission. That was during a period where he was attempting unsuccessfully to initiate a romantic relationship with her. Dude, why is it always fucking incels, dude? Like... We need to, we need to lock some of these motherfuckers up and just investigate, dude. A dick. He's building a fucking dick. Cheddar. He's building a fucking dick. A dick. A penis. The psychological manipulation that underlies the... It's not a kind act if you're, like, forcibly building a dick. A PDO. 
on a fucking unsuspecting lady's uh, heels. Okay. Missing of unwanted charitable acts is very much in line with the sort of behaviour you would expect from a batterer. Let anyone try to see the truth. Get basil. And then there's even with Anastasia Kruzik. She sells my tractor. When the police are called, the police officer says, that's stealing, that's theft. When the police officer is called, he says, I'm, we're not going to do anything about it. It's a such sensitive situation. Sensitive? She stole my tractor and sold it. What does that make her out to be? And the police protected that theft. Corruption and corruption. Another police officer, Miller, are you writing them down? Yep. Do you know his first name? No, I never read into much of them. Pembroke or OBB? Yellow there. Okay. I got beaten with a baseball bat in the field. I didn't know why I was getting it beaten. And it took a year or two later for me to finally find out Natalie Warmerdan was screwing the neighbor while she was married to her husband. Before I came along, when I came along, he was pissed off. I often wondered why the man didn't like me. I tried to help him, I helped him fix his pool. He just, and then one day I'm getting a be beaten with a baseball bat because I, uh, my bailer caught fire. I'd done nothing wrong, totally innocent. And I find out it's because all those he time I was there was because I took his affair girlfriend next door. But I had no idea. So I get a beaten with a baseball bat, could have been killed. Miller comes along and the first thing they say is, Basil, you're under arrest. I said, for what? He said, you're drinking beer. So what? I'm on my own property. I'm having a beer after a fire. And I took the Crown Attorney to look that through and see that it was wrong and made Miller go back and charge the guy with assault. The guy hit me three times with a baseball bat and finally I got the hit him and broke his nose. Other than that, I would probably be dead. And I ended up charged. Unbelievable. And I'm a cripple. And here's a young guy with a baseball bat beating on me. And in the end, he gets like six months probation or something. He beat me with a baseball bat, attempted murder. But he was beating on Basil Brutzky. Makes it okay. I understand. I understand how it works. Basil, I want to ask you a question. And it's something I ask a lot of people that I talk to because I'm interested in, 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 in what they think about it. If I was to ask you how you would describe yourself um, on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of your truthfulness, and let's say we have a scale of one to 10, and a one is a person who never tells the truth, constant liar, and a 10 is the perfect angel, someone who, Speaks nothing but the truth all the time. I, Realistically, I, I, where would you put yeah, yourself? Eight or a nine, because I do tell what I would call white lies. Uh, if I have to go around something so as not to hurt somebody, or I may not tell something that I know if I think it's going to hurt my daughter or something or that kind of stuff. So, but as far as telling the truth about what's really going on then I'd be just a 10. You know, I want to lie about anything. I never did. I never lied from the very... Well, I think I think there's necessity for those little white lies my you're talking father, about. My father told me a long time ago, Basil, have you ever heard of anybody getting caught in the truth? And that's what stuck. People get caught in lies. You can't get caught in the truth. That's true. Also, my dad said, it's not worth doing if it's not hard to do what I'm doing. 
It's very hard. Very hard. So it's worth doing. I'm trying to show the world how wrong. Am I cool yet, Chad? He says. It's wrong for the system done to me. It's and the true. system is being used by people. I'm not saying there's not abused women out there. And the system is doing the right thing for them, but there's also so many that are using what more than weaselly lying to the system corruption. Well, if I'm hearing what you're saying, there's a purpose to this killing in the burden that you're trying to take on to change society. It's called justice. I've never had justice in my life. I from what you've told me, I understand how Natalie and Anastasia fit into this, but I don't understand Carol. The very same thing. I was dating Carol Culleton. Anastasia came along. Well, I knew Anastasia way longer than Carol, but I treated Anastasia like a daughter. She was a friend. She lived in my house with her boyfriend. I ended up kind of half moving in. I still maintain my place. But in the winter when it got cold, I ended up staying more and more at her place than at my place. People may have assumed that there was a relationship going on, but they would have to be cuckoo because there was a 20 some year age difference. And if you don't believe me, simply go and talk to my doctor because I. It's so odd to be in a situation where you're caught for a triple homicide. And then the fucking cop asked the dumbest question of all time. He's like, how truthful are you on a scale of one to 10? But even dumber to answer like, oh, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham fucking Lincoln, dude. Uh, I'm like a nine or an eight, you know. I, I don't like to hurt people's feelings. It's like, well, what about murder, dude? You think murder hurts people? Because you fucking did that. What was the chatter's call? That Hassan's going to come back and immediately pause stream to deliver a take? Wow, dude. Incredible. Incredible fucking... Uh, uh, incredible take. Who would have guessed that I would do the most predictable thing on the planet? Okay. Almost as predictable as running the fucking top of the hour ad break 20 minutes early so I can fuck you guys over, okay? And get one before you shove a segue in there with a bad take. Woo! Yes, not so predictable now, baby. Let's go. Yeah, hot take delivery with Amazon Prime. Also, an Amazon Prime subscription gives you a free Twitch Prime a month that you can use here on this broadcast which will allow you to avoid the ad breaks or the ad free broadcasting experience, which Prime is free, uh, but Red also chest. a $5 subscription does that too, or an ad block or a VPN. Here's the fucking ad break now, baby. None of you knew that it was coming. None of you. I told my doctor she wanted to have something. She walked around, she'd get in the hot tub naked. You asked my doctor. I went there and I said, what is wrong with me? I cannot get an erection. She does all this to me. She'd even sit on my lap. He said, Basil, it's psychological. She's more like your daughter. She's more like your daughter's age. You see her as your daughter. It was actually a turnoff. But in court, when they asked her if we had a relationship, she said, yes. And the reason was, or if they said, were you in a relationship? She said, yes. That was a lie. I'll go tomato time. She may have wanted it to be more when she tried to part Carl and I, and eventually she did. And Carl knew all of this, and I wanted Carl to go to court and testify that she knew all about Anastasia and me treating her like her, calling her like a daughter. Or, and instead, uh, Carol took off with another guy. Then when I got out of jail, I just tuned in Carol's 30 seconds back. ago and Hassan is amped. What did you she guys do? Guy. Hassan, thanks for being you. So I fixed her cottage all up. 
XD. Called me two and a half, three months, and did every chance I got, cleaning it up, wiring, plumbing, gave her money. Mm -hmm. She lied to me. She told me she was so Happy broke. I gave her, I pulled my own RSPs out and gave her my last peanuts. Based off of the accounts from everyone close to Carol Collins, Incel, simp, hand in hand. Two sides, same coin. Button. Barutsky's characterization of their relationship is purely delusional. Nobody recalls them being romantically involved. Kulatin merely hired Barutsky for various repair and carpentry jobs. He would arrive at her residence unannounced so frequently that those around her categorized it as stalking. Oh, for nothing, it was all for money. She didn't get much. Natalie got the most. Barutsky's relationship with Natalie Warmerdam began pleasantly enough, and she even believed him when he bemoaned his ex-wife's oh, lying in court not. about domestic abuse that never happened. Over time, however, he became violent toward her and her son too, escalating to the point where on July 27th of 2012, he was arrested and charged with assault and uttering death threats. He I served only 30 days in jail ads. and Thanks, never Sergeant. attended the court-ordered partner assault response. Bro. If the court system treated, like, petty theft and a bunch of other shit Let's that, like, <clears throat> get black people locked in jail in perpetuity like they do, like, white rapists and domestic uh, abusers, like, like, why don't we just flip the sentencing on that? It's wild, dude. I, okay, look, I cover, I cover, like, sexual assault shit like that all the time. And obviously, I'm not, like, an advocate for sentences but it blows my mind that like people just beat the shit out of women and like you know abuse their partners and shit and only go to jail for 30 days there's not that's not even enough time for him to cool the fuck down this program that was part of his parole this was all before his battery of anastasia kuzik anastasia got a vote Natalie got about 200,000, 180 or something plus. Well, pretty well all my equipment, man. And then her son burnt the garage down. Oh, my tools were in there. I got nothing. And uh, Anastasia would have got me for about. Listen, I'm not even advocating for mandatory minimums for domestic abuse. That would be very hypocritical of me. But it does, at some point, feel like the leniency comes from the experience of the judges in sentencing. It's crazy that it's like sexual harassment, rape, kidnapping of women, which is like another famous case that I, uh, I recall. Like, all of that stuff is just seen as such... Like th those those things just get such lesser sentencing than the the victimless crimes that half the time uh, get you locked up in jail. Um, Not just in Canada either. That fucking being Catholic priest got four now. years for molesting like twelve year old boys. From young girl. Thirteen, maybe or something like that. I love this chat has lol so Ajahn um, doesn't count if you're early pogo tomato time. And then she went back with her boyfriend and she's laughing. Him and her are laughing, calling me the BF. Best friend that'll do anything that she wants. So all these women used to put you through the ring over the years and used you. And they're all connected, they all know each other. They've given you such a hard time. Why do you feel you needed to take on this burden yourself to prove this point after all this suffering you've already gone through, Hazel? Like I said, like this is a difficult road you've chosen here. Why are you doing this just to prove a point? Uh, is there not some other way? I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Other way? Uh, I don't know. Explain. 
Well, half a year, Pogo. All these women here that have slighted you or, or lied to you in some way, cheated on you, and you've killed them all to make this point that the justice system doesn't work. And that road you've chosen is going to have consequences. So what I'm saying is with all the suffering that you've already done to this point dealing with these three women, you know, why, why are you... I love this dude. This Basil Bai. The only reason why I know why the chatter is saying that, look at the way Basil's sitting. Taking on this, this this burden to draw society's attention to it by yourself. I'm not quite sure what you're saying, but I think that you know not think society. We finally answered the question: Can there be too much visibility? The way I, I do. I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet that the by people in the chat who wanted by visibility are probably no longer wanting such visibility, too much visibility. Everything has been taken from me, my job, my health, my family, my dignity. You all lost. by the police and people that use the police. You, That's the you lost many things. I've lost everything. Do you think it's a little bit selfish on your behalf to take those women's lives for you to prove a point. To prove a point. Selfish? I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, I am going to prove right now what you're saying. Well, these women that you killed is part of a grand scheme to draw, for you to draw light on the fact that the justice system apparently doesn't work. No, it's not a scheme. Where are you getting this from? There's no scheme. I told you, I don't, I was reading the Bible, talking to this lady, I went to bed. All I remember was going to sleep. Wow. We should hear him out. I think he's got a, he's, I think, hold on. I think he's making a good point. I don't even remember going to sleep. And then I woke up and I don't even know if I drank coffee. I just went out of the house. Like, what, what was he thinking? Like, he's thinking that the Bible is going to absolve him? Like, this one is called the Bible defense. When you do a murder, <clears throat> as long as you can prove that you've written or you've read a Bible, you can get away with it for free. I remember... One point thinking about a zombie. This is literally the fucking sanest. Uh, uh, oh my god. This is the sanest JBP fan. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm I'm forgetting his, his name. What the fuck? Gordon B. Peterson. Hey, uh, John, and, John, please. Uh, and I, I was being confused. I, I was drunk and deeply I, regret my behavior. I, I remember seeing the behavior our father again. It was wrong. Over, I'm so sorry. Over, it was uncharacteristic over, of me. I was at this top of the hour ad break. I, please unbend tomato time. I said, I was talking to myself out loud, or I think I was. Maybe I wasn't. But I, I kept. Saying, God, keep me safe, show me what to do, or stuff, or, and uh, I don't know what, I don't. Here, Baruski begins transitioning to a representation of his killing spree that differs from what he was putting across earlier. Whereas before, he stated that he was trying to show the world how wrong the justice system is. Now he's beginning to paint a picture where he had no conscious intentions at all, that he was essentially beside himself during the entire episode, he heavily implying that a higher power was acting through him. It's a very dubious claim, given, aside from anything else, the systematic execution of the murders. The reason behind wanting to present this narrative is also unclear. It may be a psychological mechanism to lessen his own feelings of culpability. Or perhaps it's to further the notion that these were killings not only sanctioned, but to an extent taken out by God himself. Maybe there's no rationale behind it. Maybe you're just watching the arduous ramblings of a dreary lunatic. 
it was like a nightmare or not a nightmare, a dream or a... I remember a zombie. What, what do you mean you felt like a zombie? What, what was going on there? Like, a, like I was beside myself, like I was looking at this from over there. I could see myself. Uh, Hold on. That's the way it looked at. I thought I could see myself walking from over there. Over, forward, beside myself. But what did you see yourself doing? Walking from the house to the car. I remember, I don't know, I really don't. I would ask him, God, show me what to do. I remember it was, I don't know if I was seeing a light up or, or seeing it in my head. Why would, why would God have you kill those women? Okay, so that seems kind of counterintuitive. Uh, no. What reason could there be for that? No, to me it seemed like... This one is called the filibuster defense. If you continuously talk about a bunch of random nonsense, then the criminal mind oftentimes will assume that the police officer will fall asleep and then he can walk away scot-free. It seemed like God was trying to show me that the commandment isn't thou shalt not kill, it is thou shalt not murder, and that when somebody it's murder to kill somebody that's innocent, that's why I couldn't kill myself because I thought about shooting myself, but I can't do that because I am innocent, didn't do it wrong. Because that would be me murdering myself. <laughs> I couldn't kill myself because I'm innocent, so that would be murder. Incredible. I don't, does that make any sense? It is. So, in terms of Carol and Anastasia and Natalie, would you say you killed them or murdered them? I killed them because they were... Dude, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This guy's literally a fucking Reddit debate lord. Not innocent. They were guilty. I was innocent. Could you turn I the volume on TTS I Justice Midge? I can't wrong. hear the interview cause M Ho. What's your message in all this? It is no message, it's vindication. I do not care that the law says I can't blow above a 0 0.08 <clears throat> in the breathalyzer. I was the Bible says that I was drinking Jesus' blood. Okay, it's not called drunk driving. It's called drinking Jesus' blood and traveling. Obviously, this means I am totally exonerated. Would have been. But you're, you're not following me here. There's two things. It's like me walking, being the zombie, and me over here looking at the zombie. It's like two, a lot of what I'm telling you is history of 20 years got to here. And, and then there's the zombie part. So the guy watching the zombie, the zombie is me. The guy that's watching the zombie. So this guy is too stupid to put together like a insanity plea. Or the automaton, or whatever the fuck it's called, defense that we saw yesterday. But it still might work because I think this dude's brain cells are rotting. Every moment that he sits with this guy is a moment where he's losing brain cells rapidly. He's giving, by the end of it, he's giving, like, yeah, I think you're free to go, sir. 
Bobby is. Like, look at him, dude. He's literally like, oh, Does please that make stop. Sense to you? The 20 years of my ex wife, where from where it started to. There's always a reason why something happens. Right? Does that make any sense? Of course at all. it is. There's always a reason why things happen. And you get 20 years of reasons. Do you remember what you did after you left Carol's? Does that help? If you think about it like a chronology, when you left Carol's, and somehow you end up at. Anastasia's. I just know I left Carl's and I said, God, what do I do? And I just, I remember going through a little bit of construction and I just drove in. And I remember thinking that God is really helping me because when I went to Carl's, Carl walked right outside. Mm -hmm. What did she do? And then I asked her. This guy <clears throat> was visibly less pained when this dude was talking about the murders themselves. Like, while he was describing the gruesome details of the horrible actions that this dude committed, he seemed less shell-shocked than having to listen to the most boring murderer in America, or sorry, in Canada. Talking about fucking God, like at least be charismatic and creative with your uh, with your defense, dude. Holy shit! I said, yeah, Canada is America. It's America's hat. Why do you hate me, or why are you doing this to me? He's literally sitting over there, like, why did we arrest this dude? If I knew this was gonna happen, I would literally let him go. And then I broke the window with my elbow. I reach in and I unlock the door and she said this is not you Basil this is not you then she told me that uh, Dave was coming over to the hydro was out and I said you're lying to me again where is Jim Smith when you need him dude Jim Smith with a melt of this fool already Jim Smith would have walked away because he's like, okay, you've already admitted that you murdered them. I don't give a fuck what your personal definition is. There's only one definition I care about under this roof. And that is the law, sir. The Canadian Constitution. Defended by judges wearing the weirdest robes that you've ever seen, sir. I'm Jim Smith. And you just got pranked. No, I already ran the top of the hour ad break. I ran it early. Stop pre-firing. You have literally 60 more fucking uh, minutes. Uh, cable, TV, coil. I picked it up and I hit her with it and I wrapped it around her head. And she just kept saying, this is not you, Basil. This is not you. Basil. Ah. Take my hand for what? I just want to shake you. I want to thank you for being the guy that you said you are this whole time you've been here, a truthful good person. It's a rare experience I get to meet somebody what? who actually... I was right! It literally you. melted him! Frame melted, boys. Here you have a Sigma male who melted the frame of the beta. Walks to talk to Fritchie. Walks like what? Yeah. Well, you said you... Eight, eight, nine out of ten, you're a truthful person. And you don't lie unless it's to protect somebody, other than the low white lies. I'm not sure why. Well, that's what you're doing right now. You're being truthful. You're finally going crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it wasn't just that thing. Your other days, a couple of days before it was maybe right through. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, take your time, take a minute. Don't touch. Why didn't you just do the ego up shit earlier, bro? You could have saved yourself two fucking hours of wanting to kill yourself. This guy almost got another confirmed kill. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to take a gun out of the apartment because 
I'm all right. So I took him to the head in the bush in the garbage bag. But the same thing, I, I wasn't doing that. I, I see myself doing that. Does that make sense? I was over there. I'm here. I'm like a camera and I can. Where did, you, where did you lay in the bush, please? Just along the road. It's always really cool and really valid when you start off the argument that you're totally justified in murdering these innocent I was a women. Frog, but I'm awake the stream today. And then halfway through, you switch and you say, well, God did it. And then now you're actually sad that you ended up murdering the, the women for God. No, he's not schizophrenic. He's just literally throwing darts at a fucking wall, dude, and hoping that one of them sticks because he's too stupid. He's literally too stupid to fucking recognize that the other person is not as dumb as he is. That's all this is. I love that chatters, though, are so quick to just, like, immediately diagnose this person with, like, all different manner of, like, oh, he's depersonalizing, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, he's just making shit up, dude. We saw a legitimate case of someone who w had a... Triggered psychotic attack yesterday. This dude is just making shit up. But it's all fucked up. And you listen to that feel and you believe them? That God's making this easy because. Carl came out the door because when I got to Anastasia, she walked out the door. As soon as I walked out, I even wasn't even at the door, she just walked out. And I asked Anastasia, I just said, why did you lie in court? And she said, I didn't. And the gun went off. Because it just lies. What happened when you went to Natalie's farm on Tuesday? What happened? I just the drove in, walked in the door. She was sitting there. She went in the corner. I followed her. So, walked out. That's it. Detective O'Neill's performance in this interrogation is absolutely commendable. Even though if viewed casually, one might think he hasn't been doing all that much. To that end, it's a great example of how much can be achieved through simply observing your subject, settling on the approach most likely to elicit information from them, and then staying in that lane with absolute discipline. Note how much... I think this guy needs help. It's on your soap. Ignorant of mental illness, what the fuck? Dude, I need to find a new name for, like, disability activists who are, like, over-the-top care lords who unironically end up engaging in, like, ableist fucking shit. You know what I mean? Because it's like, dude, you're so stupid. Like, you're such a dumb person. You are such a dummy, dude. Like, one, you're diagnosing a motherfucker over the camera. And two, two, you're diagnosing them falsely. And lastly, <sighs> you're falling. And worse, perhaps the worst offense here is that you're falling for his bullshit that was so dumb. And even this fucking cop with a cop brain was able to be like, yeah, you're out of your, you're just fucking lying to me. You're out of your mind if you think I'm going to believe anything you're saying. OTS, all able, all able by people with these shitty takes. Yeah, it's like the same, dude, it's the same energy. Like the overcorrective Andes unironically have the same energy as like the white people who like yell at you about, uh, you know, Fucking, I don't know, uh, that you did a racism or something.
try bongos. Refresh, he said he's not an activist, I think. Well, he's just fucking joking or whatever. What I'm saying is I'm not an activist, Andy. I think they were baiting. Detail Brudsky has provided in the last few minutes. With yeah, white people yelling at Hispanic people to call themselves Latinx. Limited prompting. Now compare that with his reluctance to engage three hours ago. So one of the reasons about here is to give you this opportunity to explain why you killed these three girls. Zero Detective O'Neill has taken Barutsky from being extremely withholding and surly, all the way to a point where he's divulging how the day's events unfolded, to a level that borders on confiding in his interrogator. The detective has achieved this transformation, not through the use of any flashy tricks, but by simply observing that Barutsky's primary desire is to be listened to, and then granting him that wish, all the while a degree of... Listen, my takes on disability... Someone who's able-bodied and super fucking uh, privileged um, are not as bad, okay? At least from where I'm standing. Like, I recognize I have blind spots. Disability, uh, disability uh, stuff is one of them. Gender is another one. When we go beyond, like, you know, the Joe Biden strategy of of saying, you know, more than three. Or what did he say? Did he say at least three? Where I'm standing? Dude, come on. I was not fucking... Standing blind spots, really? Shut the fuck up! Okay, now you're going to stunlock me. You're literally going to stunlock me because you're, you're... See, this is what I mean. They're doing the thing, like... People that don't have disabilities are currently doing the, the thing where they're, like, overcorrective. Okay, let's understanding of his actions. He's kept confrontational statements, questions, and interjections to a minimum, and from there, just allowed time to do the rest for him. It was funny. It was like I wasn't even pulling the trigger on the gun. There is never an advantage off. to taking the Boop. Hey. the interrogation. It's like, I don't know how that was really upset. I don't think so. I'm seeing, but. Where did you go after? And then drove again. And then Hassle. I was driving. I went to the fat man. I was trying to tell you this. The guy that she was getting those back from. He was the guy that was selling them. I found out where he lived. A little sawmill. I drove around the place. I talked to two people. I asked them, is the big guy here? And they all said, both said no. What? Your chat is awfully critical. When they say your disability is valid, when I say I was British. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh my God, dude, that's great. Aiden, that was the funniest fucking thing you could have said today. Aiden, you really brought it home, bruv. It's coming home. It's coming home, bruv. Okay, so he was there on the other side. The other guy said, no, he's not here. When I drove around. And then I left. How do you feel about what's happened to these women that's I don't know what to say to you because there's two, two of me. Well, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But well, let's hear two perspectives. It's not, it's, it's. I can't, dude. English people do not deserve a dub. Okay, fuck it. I'm saying it, dude. I held okay. it in for far too long. I don't care about football, fooey. It's making me mad, especially after how fucking shitty Boris Johnson has been. And how, I guess, I guess technically they, the people deserve it. It's just the country doesn't deserve it, dude. Especially because they get so fucking annoying when they win. It's like, they just can't shut the fuck up. They're the most yes. annoying winners.
How can they be allowed to win the Euro Cup after Brexit? That's what I'm saying. That's what makes it worse. They literally fucking left the European Union and they're going to win the Euro Cup, bro. They're going to win the fucking Euro Cup, bro. We're annoying when we win. Didn't you blast crab rave music when Trump lost the election? Wait, that's not annoying. That's a, that's a celebration for the entire world. It's not an exclusively fucking English situation where all the oi, bruv, the British are going to fucking rub it in all of our fucking noses, yeah? Immediately after fucking Brexit, yeah? Are we sure Italians deserve it? Yes, they're victim to so much hatred, dude. Italians are, are victimized by society every day. One, for being POC, and then two, for not being recognized as POC. It's a double whammy. Nine months with this imbo. True. Fucking true. They deserve the world, dude. All right, let's keep going. How do you feel right now? Not at the time is what I'm getting at. Right now, me and you in this room, empty. Would you take it back if you could? Of course, in the middle. Good. Easy. I don't know. Because when I asked Anastasia, why did you lie? Why couldn't she just have said, LFG? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure not. I would have stopped. But no. I would have been a Or C. Because it would have stopped right there, but she still lied. And Carl. Nice. And I talked about her so much about the being honest and the truth and the positive. I, I like that the video slowly but surely uh, deviates to a position where you just can't hear it or see it anymore. And she's still alive. Like by the end of the video, there is no more audio the left. There's no more video left. Motherfucker's still going, though. Don't get me wrong. He's still going. He's still explaining the situation about God. He saw the Eight phrase months. good girl and immediately go. stops and reads this. I was actually going to mention that it was like one of the funniest uh, ways to get me to watch a video, but we're too uh, deep into this fucking investigation at this point. Sorry about how it all ended. Of course, I feel sorry. The sand is a footy frog mad at Turkey Maybe for leaving that grip stage. I didn't. No, I know I didn't shoot myself. But I did know that if I kept the gun and waved it around, for sure I would have been shot. I was thinking, but not thinking. I was thinking, I think, I think I was thinking a little better. I'm hanging chicken feet down, over the doors to celebrate. I started right. For some reason. Okay. I can't. And the paddy wagon stopped and ran for from Ottawa to ran for. I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I, I'm putting my fucking foot down. This my pants. And I probably like a hernia. I cannot hold. Mm -hmm. Then when we got, we went to Pembroke. I thought I didn't even know. I thought. Oh my God! Hang on, there's a. Barutsky will go on to represent himself in court, and during those proceedings, he will compose himself in just as an insufferable manner as you've witnessed in this video. Barutsky consistently refused to speak, present evidence, or cross-examine witnesses. Then toward the end of the proceedings, he complained to Ontario Superior Court Justice Robert Maringer that he was never afforded the opportunity- Bro, he should- That's it. This 51-minute video convinced me I'm no longer- Anti-capital punishment. I think the state should have to, the state should be able to just, you know, murk some people, okay? This is one of them. Not even for the triple homicide or the domestic abuse. 
over the course of many years. But just this, okay? This alone is enough for capital punishment. I'm losing my fucking mind. He is so fucking yes. insufferable, dude. The worst kind of person, just like thinking he's smart. And just going on and on and on about dumb bullshit, dude. Yeah, polemism is on the rise now. Opportunity to present a defense when it was pointed out by Judge Marringer that he had been provided with aforementioned opportunities and passed on them multiple times, Barutsky simply stated that he did not believe him. Ultimately, Basil Barutsky was sentenced to 70 years without the possibility of parole for his crimes, meaning he will need to live to the age of 128 before being eligible for release. Good. If anyone were to manage to live that long, purely for the sake of making life unpleasant for everyone, it probably would be Basil Barutsky. But fortunately, worst. in they all likelihood, no one will ever have a good reason to think about him ever again. Country considering how stupid they are with people not having to wear masks in the stadiums. They are trash. They boo every other country's national hymn. They shouldn't even host. They shouldn't even be a host country considering how stupid they are with people not having to wear masks in stadiums. They're trash. Damn, okay, dude. That's too much Britophobia, okay? Come on. Yo, these videos end so ominously. Dude, I know. like this video please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos <laughs>